Hey everyone, Steve Monette here with another video in my Bible Prophecy Bite series where we look at Bible scripture, history, and current events that all point to the soon return of Jesus the Messiah. Okay, so for today's video, I want to continue talking about the scriptural identification of the Antichrist. This will be part four of my series, Come Out of Her, My People. And as promised, uh, we're going to continue talking about Daniel 7 and uh, Daniel's dream of the uh, fourth beast kingdom uh, that will rule the world until the arrival of uh, Jesus at the second coming. And in my last video, I submitted evidence to you that I think proves that there were, in fact, ten kings that emerged from the Roman Empire in the fourth century, just as the Bible told us. And the little horn that Daniel speaks of uh, that was reportedly going to be different from the rest and that ultimately would subdue three of those ten kings was none other than the papal dynasty itself. And we were able to arrive at this conclusion because that is where the evidence led us, not something that we just made up or just wanted to believe, but rather it's where the evidence led us, okay? Big difference. So, Let's see if the evidence will continue to point to the papal dynasty with other aspects of, of Daniel's dream. And for today, we'll talk about Daniel 7, verse 25, where the angel tells Daniel that the little horn will take very specific actions and will be given power for a specific number of years. Okay? And we're going to focus on... Actually, uh, let me just read the verse, okay? Okay. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. So, for this video, let's talk about speaking against the Most High. How you identify yourself can say a lot about a person. Well, wait a minute, have we, have we heard that line before recently, right? A title can show the world that you are either humble or that you think of yourself as somebody quite special. And when we look at the titles and descriptions uh, given the papal dynasty over the many centuries, we can clearly see that these popes think that they are God. Multiple examples I'm about to give you. Number one. Title number one, which you're all familiar with, is called the Vicar of Christ. The word vicar comes from the Latin word vicarious, meaning substitution. The online version of the Pocket Catholic Dictionary defines the Vicar of Christ as, quote, the Pope, visible head of the church on earth, acting for and in the place of Christ. End quote. So the Pope, in this particular case, has a title that implies that he is substituting himself for Jesus here on earth. Interesting. <laughs> and if you look up the word Antichrist, it actually means instead of, in place of, or replacement of Christ, or substitute for Christ. So here we have right here proof that the Vicar of Christ is just another way of saying Antichrist. But again, real interesting stuff. All right. The Pope will also have claims of universal authority over the whole church. In the, the Catholic Catechism, number 882, we read, For the Roman Pontiff, by reason of his office as Vicar of Christ and as pastor of the entire church, has full, supreme, and universal power over the whole church, a power which he can always exercise unhindered, end quote. Now, of course, we know that this is a lie because Jesus is the head of the church. And so this particular title, the Pope claims to have authority in reality that only Jesus has. All right, next one. Infallibility. This one is really interesting. In catechism, the Catholic catechism, numbers 890, 891, and 892, all speak of the doctrine that states the Pope is infallible or without error 
in matters of biblical teaching and matters of morals and ethics. <laughs> That's funny, I'm sorry. So with this self-description, the Pope claims to be perfect in all matters related to Bible Scripture. Now, since the Bible teaches us that all men have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, and that only God is good, we now have a case where the Pope claims to be just as perfect as God himself. So, in essence, the Pope has elevated himself to be at the same level as God. All right. Just recently, in 2004, Bishop Patrick Dunn of Auckland, which is in Australia, uh, and this occurred on 920 of 2004, stated this. It seems that Pope John Paul II now presides over the universal church from his place upon Christ's cross. End quote. Now, this claim by the Pope is just beyond, beyond the pale. <laughs> he really takes the cake. To claim that the Pope has a place besides Christ on the cross is just ridiculous. And I'm just going to leave it at that. End of story. It's just ridiculous. But whatever. <laughs> and then in July of 1895, the Patriarch of Venice, whose name was Cardinal Sarto, stated the following, quote, The Pope represents Jesus Christ himself. End quote. And then in 1302, Pope Boniface said these words, Furthermore, we declare and we proclaim and we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. And once again, the papal dynasty has put themselves on the same level as Christ. And then the final example for today is this. The Pope calls himself the Holy Father. Many people call him the Holy Father. And we know this to be wrong because Jesus told us in Matthew 23, verse 9, Call no man your father on earth, for you have one Father who is in heaven. So in this case, the papal dynasty by way of another title, Holy Father, have placed themselves on the same level as God by calling them themselves a name that is reserved only for God. So, I have to be honest with you, these are just a very small quantity of examples that, uh, that I found during my research. If you do your own research, you are going to find numerous other examples. Um, it's just amazing how these guys make these crafty statements that sound good at first glance, but in reality are quite blasphemy, blasphemous, to say the least. Now, all right, let's put this all together, and then we'll call it a day. Based on the evidence that I just gave you, it is clear that the papal dynasty for centuries has been exalting themselves to the same level as Jesus uh, and or God the Father. They hide it in these fancy titles and in these, these wonderful words of wisdom. But again, they are quite blasphemous to say the least. And this exaltation is not limited to titles and descriptions only. If you may recall, heads of state from all over the world and for centuries would come to the Pope and bow down to him and kiss his hand. There are numerous videos and photos and even paintings that prove this. Obviously, this is a form of godly worship. Hopefully, you can see that. So all of this evidence begs the question, could the papal dynasty be the Antichrist or the man of sin or the son of perdition? If you were to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, you will see, maybe, that the evidence in this video points to a new understanding of who the Antichrist really is. It really is amazing to many that look to the future for this Antichrist figure without ever looking into the past. But when the evidence seems to indicate is that that someone 
has been amongst us for centuries. Okay, so I'm going to call it uh, here for today. Uh, next video that I'll be putting out will be uh, concerning wearing out of the saints. Um, until next time, keep looking up, for our redemption draws near. Thanks for watching.